So, none of your friends are into filmmaking? Or maybe you just hate other people? No problem, I got you. I'll give you five tips on how to film yourself. <laughs> So, you want to go shoot something, but you don't know what and there's no one around to help you. Sounds familiar? Yeah, right? So, what do you do then? Well, just film yourself, like I did last week, and the extra challenge that I set for myself to boost my creativity was that I had to come up with at least two shots with camera movement. If you haven't seen that video yet, here's a short clip. I'll put a link to the full video and the behind the scenes in the description, so go check it out after you've watched this video, because first let me give you some tips on how to film yourself. First one, you don't need much, a camera or a smartphone and a tripod, that's it. The tripod you need for two reasons. First of all, you're filming yourself, so it's a lot easier if you can put your camera on a tripod so that you don't have to look for places to put your camera all the time. And secondly, moving shots. Look, you could easily make a cool, fast-paced sequence with nothing but static tripod shots. But you could also use your tripod to get some cool moving shots, shots with camera movement. I held my tripod upside down or in front of me while I was riding the bike or while I was walking and the result looks amazing because it's unexpected in a solo b-roll and it makes the whole sequence look more dynamic and upbeat. So. A tripod and preferably a cheap light one even because it's easier to handle when you're riding a bike or walking around. Mine's pretty heavy and I can feel it because you know I'm not Peter Lindgren. Um, <laughs> almost. Um, anyway and for all of you who want to know the exact setup that I used for my video it was my Sony a7S III and a 17 to 28 mm lens with an ND filter so that I could shoot at wide apertures without overexposing my footage. Look, a problem I have sometimes is that when I'm shooting a video, on location I'm already starting to think about editing. How am I gonna cut and arrange the shots? Now, that's not always a bad thing, of course, but especially when you're starting out, you know, your first videos, there's a chance that you start overthinking everything. And that's a bad thing. You know, like, is that shot gonna work with the previous shot? Should I try a different shot maybe? How will I edit it? Is it gonna flow? I don't know, I'm not sure. Oh my god, so much pressure. And then before you know it, the day is over and you have like three shots. That's it. Great. Filmmaking, so much fun, right? So yeah, for a simple solo b-roll, what I like to do sometimes is completely separate the editing process from the shooting process. On location, I only focus on getting good shots. That's it, one shot at a time. Composition, angle, framing, you know what I mean? And I don't think about editing. Now, of course, that means that you need a plan or a workflow to make sure that you get all the shots that you need to create a cool looking sequence. Here's what I did. I divided my story into smaller parts or actions and then I made sure that for every smaller part I did at least two wide shots, two medium shots and two close-ups. And ideally also one or two unexpected creative special shots. It can be anything, but that's optional. So for example, me riding the bike down the road was one smaller part of my story and so I made sure that I got at least two wides, two mediums and two close-ups of me riding the bike. And I did the same for every part of the story. Me arriving with the bike, me walking down that little path and then me taking a photo of something. And the thing is, when I'm shooting, I don't know if I'm gonna use all those shots but it's like a template that I follow. And if you follow that workflow in combination with the previous tip, then you'll see that there's a lot more room for creativity when you start editing because you don't have the whole video already edited in your head with a limited number of shots. You know what I mean? Editing becomes this separate creative process where you almost start from zero, but 
it opens up so many possibilities. So it's a different approach, but it works sometimes. And you know, just try it out. <clears throat> I have to drink. I don't know what it is. What's happening to me? Oh my God, I sound like a robot. This is a question from you guys. How do I set the focus manually? Well, for a close up, it's actually pretty simple because you can put your hand in front of the lens where your face is gonna be and then you just set the focus on your hand. So that's easy. Now, if it's a wide shot, what I usually do is I try to set the focus on something, an object that I know I will be standing near when I do the shot. Or I put something in the frame solely for the purpose of setting the focus. Sometimes I take a branch or my gorilla pods, my bike, I put it in the frame, set the focus and then take it away again. And then I do the shot. Now, of course, using manual focus means that if you're moving toward or away from the camera, you're not gonna be 100% in focus all the time. But that's okay, there's no other way. Unless you use autofocus, but then you know, there's a chance that it doesn't track you or it starts hunting. So if you use manual focus, it's okay if you're not 100% in focus all the time. Just make sure that you're in focus where it matters, the most important part of the shot. For example, the part where I arrive with the bike. I set the focus on the area where I throw the bike on the ground because that's the most important part. But when I start walking into the forest, I'm already a little bit out of focus. But again, that's fine, no one will notice, especially if you use a wide lens, it won't be that bad. Okay, and finally, kill your darlings. Yes, kill them. Don't be afraid not to use a great shot in your sequence if it doesn't work. Yes, you do need a lot of shots, but that doesn't mean that you have to use them all. I think that I didn't use at least 25% of all the shots that I did that day. And sometimes that includes great shots, shots that you're really proud of. But if it doesn't work for the story, then it doesn't work and you shouldn't use them. When you start editing, the whole story, the whole sequence is what matters and not individual shots. So kill those darlings. There, that's everything I wanted to say today. I highly recommend you to shoot, shoot. <laughs> this is weird if I say shoot yourself. <laughs> Stop it. Don't shoot yourself, film yourself. I highly recommend you to shoot a B-roll of yourself, to film yourself because you'll learn a lot. You'll learn to be creative, to improvise, to adapt and overcome, and it'll help you to understand some of the concepts of filmmaking better. Wow, now I sound like one of my college professors. Let's just end it here. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and see you in the next one. I highly recommend you to shoot yourself. Wow.